Do you still consider yourself up and coming? No, no. I think I, in, in our scene, in the South Asian scene, I think it's pretty safe to say I'm pretty well established. And um, you know, a, a lot of the South Asian community has known me since 11, 12 years ago. So um, up and coming in America, no, not really. I think that they know, I think there's always demographics that don't know who you are. Uh, and then there might be demographics who once they hear a song, uh, whether it's your biggest hit, they'll be like, oh, that's you, okay. And then they start figuring out that they've actually heard more songs from you and stuff. Um, but interestingly enough, what I'm about to do now is do another just diversion over here where there will be, I might actually be like an, a brand new artist for some people because I'm doing, I've made a very active, a very, a very strong and, and uh, firm decision to, despite the pressures in mainstream music, to just go pop, 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 because that's what sells the most. It does. You can't compare a pop smash to an R&B smash to a hip hop smash. You can't. Pop smash is more than selling the 15, 20 millions as a massive, huge R&B smash might get 800,000 downloads or a million. But I don't care about those figures anymore. Like. I've sold 18 million yeah. singles. So like for me, I'm like, I've done that. I've been very blessed to have had that much success in pop, but it doesn't make me happy anymore. It doesn't. The pop music that I hear nowadays is, is so generic. It could be sung by any artist. It's just about, that's a hit. Oh, so-and-so needs a hit. Oh, but so-and-so is looking for the same song. Oh, so-and-so, oh, it could work for anyone. So there's no identity in, in pop, pop music anymore. And I just don't enjoy it anymore, you know what I mean? The, the way that I used to. And so I'm like, let me just do what I love and what I'm actually best at. And I think all my fans know this. What they love from me is those R&B slow jams. They love those R&B joints. Ride It, Stay, all of those kind of songs that the Sex 101, you know, all of these songs that, that I gave them Mars. It's, it's, that is who I am. As a songwriter, I am able to write anything. I could write a country record tomorrow, but if I, if I knew it was a smash and my record company's like, that's a smash, Jay, you need to sing that. Oh, now I'm singing a country record just because it's a smash? So wait, who am I again? I don't understand. Because one minute I was an R&B guy, the next minute maybe I'm a pop guy, and now I'm gonna be country because it's a smash? Like, how long do you keep doing that? chasing smashes, chasing hits before you kind of go, I'm actually really losing in touch with who I am and losing my fan base because they can see that you're clearly chasing the smash. So I'm like, forget numbers, forget it. I have the reason I have such a loyal fan base is because they know when I go to a Jay Sean concert, he's gonna sing me my favorites, all of these songs that I knew from him from back in the day. So why stop then? Like why carry on giving them that same music they fell in love with? That's what I'm doing now. Have you ever written a song for her? Oh yeah, yeah, a number of songs. <laughs> uh, especially on the first, on the My Own Way album when we first started dating. Uh, the song Maybe was about her, Stay was about her, She's Just a Friend was about her. Um, any other ones on there? How did you feel about She's Just a Friend? Well, that was well, when she- Well, it was a struggle. That, yeah. That's what the, she just, it was, it was, that was the problem. That's so what that, was going yeah. on. It was like, are we, are we not? What's going on, yeah. so. Yeah, so I mean like, I, sometimes I do of course draw on personal experience but most of the time as a songwriter we're able to just put on our our imaginary you know put on that hat and just be a different person uh, and that's part of the fun of being a songwriter I think. Do you think you'll ever go back to to music and pursuing uh, your singing? Um, I don't, you can never say never right? <laughs> no I mean I'm always gonna be a singer at heart it's always part of who I am. Um, I'll probably do music for like my yoga DVD We've been talking about maybe doing a song for Ava, like you know, you know, finding again. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly what it used to be. It can e it grow and evolve into something else, you know. Um, but music is just it's, yeah, it never leaves. It you. never leaves. She's you. always singing around the yeah. house and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. and I joke around and I'm like, I'm gonna set up a karaoke room for you, and she's like, Shut up, karaoke. She's like, I'm not doing karaoke. Don't demote me to karaoke. <laughs> is Ava musically inclined? Yes. Oh yeah. We sing to her every day. She loves it. Anytime we sing to her, she starts giggling so much. Yeah, it's really, she's like, it's very she's, cute. She, she already has rhythm she and stuff. She yeah. yeah, it's yeah, cute. It's cool. So you've got a mixtape coming out. You want to tell us about that a little bit? What, yeah. what, what your fans can expect? Right, so the reason it's called, a, it's basically an album. I'm going to just put it out there for people who don't understand what a mixtape is. It's actually an album. It's, it's 12 brand new songs that nobody's ever heard. Um, the reason we call it a mixtape is because, as all many of the South Asian community will love, the next thing I'm about to say, it's free. 
and you don't have to pay for it. So we're gonna have the whole uh, thing uh, up for uh, download for free. It's very gonna be very easy, you just click it, it's a zip file, it's just boom, straight on your computer. You're gonna have my album, uh, 12 beautiful songs. To me, I, I like, honestly, if you wanna know like what I, it's, it's, it's what I absolutely love, the kind of music that I love, the music that I love to make, the, the kind of music I love to sing, you need to get The Mistress 1, which is already out, and a fan favorite, and get The Mistress 2, which is upcoming. Is Mistress 2 a more mature you? It's, it's definitely, uh, it's, yes, mm -hmm. it's more mature me. Yeah. But also what I've done on The Mistress 2 is, because I pretty much um, wanted to, it to be a continuation of the story of, of Mistress 1, is I wrote it as if it was a movie. There's some songs which are talking about the actual affair and the sex and the lust and all of that stuff. Then there's other songs which are talking about the guilt of the affair. There's other songs which are talking about, um, you know, the love that he's caught up between these two things. It's a movie, that's how I wrote this. That's why I wanted it to have a theme. So it was really fun to put that together. And there's many different emotions on there. Plus I'm using a style that I haven't given America before. Basically when I used to rap in England, um, I used to write a lot of raps and put melodies to them and, and, and have this, it was like a sing rap flow and that's, I'm, I've reintroduced that back. Haven't done that for many years, but you're gonna hear the new style of singing on this, uh, on this album. I wanna end the interview by asking you one last question about the legacy you want to leave behind, especially for someone like Ava. What mm. do you want her to remember you as down the road? I think I want her to remember me as someone who inspired her and showed her that she could be anything that she wanted to be. And I want her to remember um, us as people who helped people, who took what we have and what we've been blessed with and used it for something good. Because I think that's everything. What about you? She stole my answer. <laughs> no, uh, I, for her, like, I want to be, I've always said, I want I want to be the fun in her life. I want her to, to love dad because he makes her laugh and he makes her smile and, and it's okay no matter what anything else is going on in school or anything else. When she comes home to dad, he'll always put a smile on her face. I remember my granddad for that, forever. My granddad, no matter what happened, would always make me laugh, would always make me smile, and that's how I'll always remember him. I would love to be remembered like that, um, you know, to Ava, but also for, to be a dad that taught her her self-value and her self-worth is more than how many likes you get on a picture on Instagram and how many people are following you on Facebook. It doesn't matter. Don't pay attention to all that. It's not important. You know, don't change your face because people say it doesn't look right in the selfie. Don't feel like you need to do all of that. Like it's you, you are beautiful the way you are. And that is something which is gonna be a big, uh, a big challenge for us in this, in this day and age to teach a child their self-worth and self-value. Um, you know, because uh, social media is a scary thing. I, I'm, I'm actually not a fan of social media and uh, it's, I think it's shaping people's personalities in a, in a bad way, in a terrible way. Uh, it, you know, it ha can have a tendency to, to do that. So that's going to be, you know, something that I think uh, I would love to pass on to Ava.